as we were talking the other day uh, we have four you know different types of controllers and we are done with our uh, standard controllers right the standard and standardless controller we have already talked about those right <clears throat> so now we are done with standard controllers the next thing that we have to do is custom controllers custom controller means we will write the logic right so custom controller is where we are going to write the logics to write the logic we have seen that visual force does not have any scope of writing the logic that's just a markup language where you can you know design your markups but you cannot write your own logics there all right so for that we will have to use the language called apex so we are going to use apex for writing the logics how will we do that <clears throat> how will we write the logics um, before we can you know write logics for the controller let's understand a few basics of apex and then we will formulate a controller all right So let's understand what is apex and you know how do we write an apex program so that we can then go ahead and uh, write our own uh, logics there what is apex apex is a strongly typed object oriented programming language all right so it's a strongly typed object oriented programming language that allows developers to execute flow and transaction control statements so this allows you to execute the transaction control statements on the force.com platform so basically a programming language which is strongly typed and it's object oriented programming language and it allows you to write your own logics on the force.com platform right it's native to the force.com platform now apex enables developers to add business logic to most of the system events so this enables you to add your logics into the system events what kind of system events are we talking about we are talking about button clicks related record updates so you know it can execute certain logics on the click of a button or when a record is being updated or uh, on the visual force pages right so that's what an apex is uh, now let's quickly move into understanding the data types of the apex right. any programming language will have certain data types right variables are being defined so i need to understand what all data types are there so in apex all variables and expressions have a data type all right and uh, these are the following data types that are available primitives as objects collections okay under collections i have lists sets maps all right so let's understand what is primitive primitives are the data types which are the common ones which you would have done in other programming language also something like a boolean so boolean can only have a true or false or null decimal a number that includes a decimal point double or 64 bit number that includes a de decimal point id id is the uh, data type for any salesforce.com record id integer 32 digit uh, 32 bit number that does not include a decimal point so all these things i think you might have used in some other programming also long a 64 bit uh, number without decimal point string set of characters date date time time only right so these are all primitive data types right which are not very very particular to the salesforce database by any chance so string integer decimals booleans so these are all primitive data types we can define primitives in salesforce programming right so while i'm writing a logic i can define strings i can define integers i can define decimals booleans like this next is s object s object is the salesforce object so the term s object refers to any object that can be stored in the force.com platform which means salesforce object any object that we have in salesforce all right 
so these are the data types for the records which are stored in the salesforce all right so an s object variable represents a row of data and can only be declared in apex so there's something which can only be declared within apex all right for example account a equals a new account contact so these kind of uh, you know records custom object these are all s objects let's say you want to define a variable for uh, an account so you can say account a equals new account or you can say account a equals select name from account where website equals www.mx.com Got it? So uh, that is there. So this is how this S objects can be defined. So S object basically refer to the Salesforce object. The same way if I'm actually referring to a contact, then I can define it as contact C. Okay, or opportunity O, whatever, right? So these are data types from the Salesforce objects and all the Salesforce objects can be defined as S objects. It can be custom or standard, doesn't matter right so that's the other type data type accounts and all other then comes the list what is a list a list is an ordered collection of primitives or s objects that are distinguished by their indices all right list is a collection more like an array you might have heard of array no? uh, in other programming language so list is more like an array, right? And this is an ordered collection of primitives or S objects. So this can be a collection of primitives or it can be a collection of S object also. Uh, collection of primitives, if you are actually forming a collection of strings or integers, uh, collection of S object, if you are you know, forming a collection of contacts or accounts, something like that, right? So for example, And how this is how it's written list of string colors equals new list of string red green blue Pink, right? So this is how a list can be defined. Got it? For string. Now, if you want to define a list for S object, you can say list of account equals select name from account where uh, industry equals education so this will hold all the accounts where the industry is equals education right? names of all the accounts got it so this is how list can be defined <clears throat> now also you know uh, particular about list I say that this is an ordered collection Ordered collection means the values are in a set or a defined order and each value has a has an index number. Got it? So if I talk about this first list, 
list of string colors. What happens is every value here, one, two, three, four values are there in the list, red, green, blue, pink. Each of them has a index number. All right. Like, and it starts from zero. So red has index zero, green has index one, uh, blue has index two and pink has index three. All right, so in a list, every value has an index number and the records are distinguished based on, based on the index number, not on the value itself. Got it? So the unique identifier for the values are the index numbers. Okay, you don't have to write the index number anywhere. It's by default understood. So the first value is zero, second is one, third is two, that goes, all right? So if you look into this diagram here, you will understand. So first is zero, second is one, third is two. We don't have to define the index numbers. It's by default there, all right? Which means if, you know, if I'm talking about this, then what does it mean? If I in include one more uh, blue here, Do you think this blue and this blue are going to be duplicate or uh, you know, unique? Do you feel this blue and that blue are going to be duplicate or unique in case of this list? Unique or duplicate? Unique. Why? Because the identifier is the index number. This in this blue has a different index number and this. Uh, value has a different index number right so a list is where you want to allow duplicates right and duplicate does not uh, you know uh, make any difference duplicate values will be allowed because the values are uh, you know the record or uh, sorry the entries are being identified based on the index numbers all right so that is what a list is it allows duplicates because the records are identified by the index numbers all right the index position of the first element in a list is always zero and then one, two, that way. All right. So you can define your list and then there are certain methods of adding values to the list. For example, uh, you know, now you want to add one more value to this list. You have already defined this list. You can always do colors dot add. Sorry, not here. Dot add. Fine. So this is how you can add a value to the list. I want to add yellow to this. So you can add this yellow uh, here to the list this way, right? Now what will happen? Yellow gets added to the end of this list. Got it? So uh, that's how our list works. All right. Got it? The concept on the list is okay? Clear? Please let me know if there is any question or doubt on the list part. So simple, you know, collection of records or collection of values which are in a set order. All right? Which are, which are in a defined order and every value has an index number. All right, just give me a minute. Okay, so the next type of collection is, this is the indexed one, right? Then I must have something which does not have an index. That is called a set. What is a set? Set is an unordered collection. So this is also a collection of values, but this is an unordered collection. This is not in an order, right? And here, the difference is that the values are the identifiers themselves, all right? So there's no index number associated with any of the values, which means Paris 
Paris, uh, sorry, this Paris value which you see here itself is the identifier for this element. So if you try to enter one more Paris into this, that will not be accepted. Got it? How a set is defined? Set is written like this. Set of string let's say cities equals to new set so instead of that keyword list here, here you are using the keyword set all right and the difference is that here there are no index numbers in the set which means duplicate values will not be allowed so even if you make an entry twice that will remain in the set only once I write Paris once and again I write Paris only one entry will be accepted the other one will be removed automatically because that's being a duplicate value right so depending on our requirement whether we want to create a list or a set whether or maybe you know understand it this way whether you want to allow the duplicate value or not based on that you decide on whether you need a list or a set here Simple. Okay. So uh, that's about our list and set. Let's understand what else do we have here. We have map also for the data type. A map is a collection of key value pair where each unique key maps to a single value. Right. So if you want to create a map between two set of records right so in this what happens there is a key value pair, uh, pair all right so there's a key and there's a value for example something like this a map of string and string call it currencies Okay, so I'm going to map currency to the countries. All right. And you can say new map and this is how we write it. Uh, this is how we write a map. Let's say India rupees. And then we have USA and I have dollar and then I have UK I have Euro this way right so I'm mapping string with string all right so you can define these kind of maps and then the advantage of defining a map is that you can retrieve the uh, values right so what you can do is you can write something like this string indian currency equals currencies dot get yeah. so it will search for this key and fetch me the correct currency from that correct so this is how a map can be used so if I have defined a map I can uh, fetch the values based on the keys all right so I think uh, we have talked about the different uh, you know uh, data types we have understood about the list we understand about uh, we, talk, we talked about the list we talked about uh, the set and we have talked about maps and we also understand the s objects right now let's use these data types to create our own controllers all right so once we start doing some examples i think uh, you know our understanding will become more clear 
before uh, you know we get into that i just have a quick question who all understand what is a class do you understand what's a class anyone who knows what's a class collection of data and member functions okay anyone else Please give me uh, two minutes, just two minutes, and huh? I'll just be back. Start writing a custom controller. We just have to understand a simple concept of class, all right? So a class is just, uh, you know, for your understanding, it's a collection of some variables and functions or methods, all right? So some variables and methods put together form a class all right so it's like a, a program which uh, has a you know few methods and it has a few variables defined inside it right so a class while we are creating a class it should have a name it should have variables defined and it should have methods in this that's it right and then this class can be called anywhere to reference those functions and variables all right so for a custom controller what you will have to do is you just have to create an apex class write your code there and call the class on your visual force page as a controller All right. So all that we have to do is we just have to create an apex class. We'll write the code inside it, and we will call that class on the Visual Force page as a controller. That's what we have to do. Got it? Okay. So right. let's get into this. Uh, okay. So go to Salesforce. Go to Setup. And then go to develop apex classes. So this is where you need to go to write your class. All right. I'll start with a very very simple class. Click on new. Create a simple class. Public class C1. Let's say I call my class as C1. This is the name of the class. And uh, I define a variable here, which is a string. Hello. How are you? All right. And to call this, uh, you know, on the Visual Force page, you need to define a method for it. So it can be public, which should be a getter method. So public string get hello. I'll return hello. Right. So this method will return the value of this variable on the Visual Force page. That's it. All right. So anything, any uh, variable that you want to return on the Visual Force page must have a get get method for it. All right. Get method defined for it. That's it. Now this is my small class which I've written where I've defined a variable and a method. Okay. 
I'm going to use this on my Visual Force page. So let me create a visual force page first right and i'm going to call that class on this visual force page the same way as you create a visual force page Alright, so I'll create a class here. Go to setup, develop, FX classes, new. The same class can be written here. Public class C1. string hello hi how are you and you go ahead and say the binary get method right Right. Now I'll create an FX page here or the visual force page rather. Which was the last page that we did?
All right. Now this is the page. So far we have just dealt with the standard controller. Now I'm gonna write a custom controller for it, right? So controller logics I've already written in the class. This is the class, okay? Logics I've written here. I just have to call that. So take the name of the class C1 and call it here as controller. So your controller equals C1. This should be the case. And now you can call the methods from the class here. So hello is the method there. I'm calling it here. All right. So any method that you want to call on the visual force page has to start with a get keyword. Okay. Then only it can understand. That it's a get method and it needs to be you know displayed on the visual force all right though this complete thing is the name of the method but it always has to start with a get keyword fine that's a must that's one thing so any method that needs to be called on the visual force page uh, to return some value has to start with the get keyword all right so I have called this class as a controller on my visual force page and I'm calling it here. Do you see this? Do you understand this logic now? Please let me know if there is any question or doubt. Simple, right? In the moment you call this method here, it returns hi, how are you? Whatever you know was the value there. Right? So this is how we can actually write our code there and we can call the code here. Let's say I want I want to define one account also here. Account A equals new account name equals Dell limited whatever right so for this also you have to define to return this account on the page you again have to define one more getter method public account whether return type will be account so say get a return a right that's it now calling this on the page visual force page you have to say a dot name see is a dot name it calls delimited so i'm defining my things here and i'm calling it on the visual force page got it so this way is whatever logic you want to write you can write your logic and stuff here and then you can display it on the visual force page now this is a completely custom controller all right all the logics everything has been written by me it's not taking with the system default logics and stuff right please tell me if uh, there is any question difficulty understanding this Are we clear on this? Okay. So let's create one more uh, small example. Right. So let's do one more example here. All right. Let's say I want to, uh, you know, define a list of all the accounts uh, and want to fetch it from the custom controller. 
so let's go ahead go ahead and create another class new class public class c2 very simple yes. so something now i am talking about a list of accounts so i will define a list of accounts and i say select name target industry and tax from account right now you just have to do public list of account now this time return type is going to be a list of accounts get return facts done now i want to call this list on my visual force page so i need a table Controller equals C2 FX page block FX page block table value equals where equals A fix column value equals a dot name okay so now what i'm doing is this is the method earlier for standard list control i was taking it from the record set value now this is coming from my method in the class right that's the only difference the rest everything on my visual force page is going to go the same way name type industry phone tax see i've got a complete list of records from my custom control Got it. So this is how simple it is. All right. So uh, please go ahead and work on this. And uh, tomorrow we will talk about few more examples. And you know, as in the, as we do more and more examples, things will keep on becoming clearer to you. Right. So tomorrow let's meet the same time, same uh, meeting link. All right. Thank you.